Hey there, today we're going to look at deploying a Nest.js application using serverless. I have a number of APIs that I have deployed uh, using Heroku, and these APIs cost me about $8 a month to keep running, um, and they don't get a lot of traffic. So a lot of times I end up paying this fee, and it's not so great because the API just sits around being unused. However, utilizing serverless, I have now moved all my APIs over uh, to the serverless framework, uh, where I'm only billed for each time the API is actually used instead of um, being charged a flat rate each month. So it ends up saving uh, a lot of money if you have APIs deployed um, that aren't used very frequently, but you still want them sitting around and, and available to your users. So it's quite simple to deploy a Nest.js application with serverless. Uh, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is install a few dependencies. Now I'm working on my crypto stats backend project that I've uh, finished in my previous video. So I'll include a link to this GitHub repo in the description so you can follow along. And then I'm also going to check out on a new branch called serverless. So if you'd like to see the repo, make sure you check out on that branch. So we're going to go ahead and yarn add uh, these packages here, so Vendia Serverless Express and then AWS Lambda. And then we'll go ahead and also install some development dependencies to get the types. So make sure we yarn add dash D type slash AWS Lambda and then serverless offline. Okay, so the first thing we have to go ahead and do uh, is actually create a new file in our source directory and I'll call this serverless.ts. Uh, and this is going to be very similar to our main.ts, our bootstrap method here, except we're not going to be listening uh, on, an, on an port and like an HTTP server would. Instead, we're going to be creating our server uh, and then exposing it to serverless so that it can be invoked, the API request can be completed, and then the API then shuts down so that it's not being billed beyond the current request that it's being executed. So what I'll do is I'll just copy our main.ts and paste it in the serverless.ts. So instead of calling await app.listen, we're just gonna call app.init here, which will initialize the application. Okay, and after we initialize the app, we're gonna need to get a handle to the HTTP adapter uh, of our app. So we can call app HTTP get HTTP adapter and then get instance here. So now that we have an instance of the express app, what we're going to do is we're going to return serverless express, uh, which expects the express app to be passed in. So we'll do just that. And then we need to go ahead and obviously import this here. So above we'll add an import. So import serverless express from Vendia slash serverless express. So now we're properly returning uh, the serverless express instance here. We're also no longer going to call bootstrap here and instead we need to export a handler that serverless will invoke uh, when the API is called. So we're going to have a handler here and this handler is going to come from AWS Lambda. Okay, it's going to be async method that gets access to the current event, the context uh, as well we import this from AWS Lambda and then we get the callback which is from AWS Lambda as well. So we have all these imports up here from AWS Lambda. And inside of the handler, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually declare a let at the top of this file called server, which will be of type handler. Uh, and this will be essentially a cached instance of our server so that we don't have to recreate it uh, if we have a lot of subsequent requests coming in at once. So we'll first check to see if the server has been initialized. Uh, and if it hasn't, then we're gonna call await bootstrap, which will set our server equal to this serverless express instance. And then we can finally return the server here, pass in the event context and callback all coming in from uh, the serverless API request. So now we've properly set up our serverless file, we're going to go ahead and create a serverless.yaml at the root of our project here. And this is going to be a YAML file which describes serverless, uh, how to deploy and use our application. 
So let's go ahead and start filling this out. Firstly, we're going to give the name of the service here. So I'm just going to call this crypto stats backend. And then we're going to specify another property here called use.env. And what use.env will do is it will uh, automatically pick up all of the environment variables uh, we've defined in our .env file here and allow us to use them in our serverless.yaml uh, here, which will be important because we need to provide these environment variables to our code. So we're also going to go ahead and now define a plugin section here. And we're going to add serverless offline, which is a plugin which will allow us to run our application offline. So with that, we can finally start uh, filling out the provider section here. And the provider section is going to be some basic information, the name of the service, we're going to specify the runtime. So this will be Node.js 12.x in our case. And then importantly, we're going to specify the environment section. And these are going to be the environment variables, which will be exposed to our Lambda code or, or our Nest.js code. So the easiest thing to do here is actually just copy all these environment variables we have here. We'll indent this, make sure the indentation matches. And now what we're going to do is specify uh, each environment variable will have a dollar sign and then brackets and then specify env colon and then the name of the environment variable. So in this case, it's auth redirect URI. So we're going to do the same thing for all these environment variables. So let's go ahead and fill out the rest of these environment variables so that they are available. And then lastly, make sure we replace the uh, actual environment variable with the correct one here each one of these. So when we deploy our serverless application, uh, if we don't specify a stage, it's going to use this .env by default. Uh, however, when we deploy to the production stage, we want to use some different variables here. So for example, our MongoDB URI, we want to point this towards a production database. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can specify a .env.prod, copy over all of these environment variables, and just change the ones we want for the production stage only. Now I've gone ahead and created a production uh, Atlas cluster for MongoDB so that I can use a MongoDB database uh, in prod. I'll leave the link to where you can sign up and get a free Atlas cluster yourself and create your own database instance to use in production. So once you create that or you have your own uh, database listening somewhere, you simply need to get the connection URI and then paste it in here as the environment variable as I've done so. So now we have all of the environment variables we need set for our production environment. We can lastly fill in the final section of our serverless.yaml and this is the functions section which will essentially describe the lambdas that we wish to uh, expose to the outside world. So we're going to have one function here called main okay and then we can specify the handler uh, which is the bit of code that's going to get executed uh, when an API request comes through. So in our case, it's going to be dist slash serverless dot handler. Uh, and this corresponds to the serverless file we set up here and then the name of the function we're exporting, so handler here. So once we build our Nest application, uh, this serverless handler will be exposed in our dist folder. Next, we need to specify an event section uh, to specify which HTTP events we want to allow this Lambda to respond to. So in our case, we're going to have two HTTP methods. This method is going to be type any, and the path will be at the root. And then lastly, we're going to have another HTTP method, and this method will be any. And then we're going to go ahead and importantly add a path here. And this path is going to be proxy plus, which specifies any uh, route is going to be proxied on to our serverless handler. So lastly, this is specific to just this project that I have set up here. Um, the bcrypt library is actually not compatible uh, with the Lambda runtime. So I'm going to have to replace this with a alternative called bcrypt.js, which exposes the same functions, but allows us to run this in a Lambda. And then I'll go ahead and remove my yarn.lock. Uh, so this is recreated after we run yarn. So I'm going to open up a terminal here and then run a fresh yarn. Okay, and lastly, before we rebuild our application, make sure in your tsconfig.json here, we need to add another property called esmodule 
interop and make sure you set this to true. Now, after we do that, we can open up a terminal again and run yarn build. So after we've built our application, we can run SLS offline, which will start our application using the serverless offline plugin. Uh, if you don't have the serverless CLI already installed, I'll include a link in the description uh, for how to get that set up. So after we run this command, we can see here that our server is listening at HTTP localhost 3000 uh, and the stage dev. So if we open up a Postman uh, application and try to execute a request that we have listening. So, if, so for example, I have a route called users uh, and then we send off this request. Uh, we can see that we get back a response and looking at the logs here, you can see uh, as soon as a request is sent, we get uh, the Nest application starting up uh, and then after it completes, we get a request ID, a duration, and then the amount of time we would be built for when this is deployed to production. So now we see that our application is working locally. We can run SLS deploy stage prod. And this is going to package our application uh, and then upload it to S3 uh, and create all the necessary resources for us in AWS on the stage that we specify here. And once it completes, we'll get an API URL that we can test out uh, and use in production. So after our application uh, is deployed here, we can get some information and notice we get the endpoint here that we can use uh, to make requests to this Lambda in production. So if we open up Postman and now we replace the URL with the production URL and we get back a response after we create a user here, which is great. Uh, and if you have any problems with your Lambda, uh, it can be helpful to type in SLS logs and then you provide the function. So in our case is main and then the stage, which is in our case prod. So if we scroll up here, uh, we can see this is the Nest application starting up for our request and then it finishes here. Uh, and we get that same information where we can see the duration of the request as well as the build duration. So I hope this short video about how to set up Nest.js with serverless was useful. Uh, I plan on moving all my APIs over to serverless in the future just because of the cost effectiveness. Uh, they can be a bit slower because of this uh, process of having to start the application up for each request. But in my case, this is a small price to pay uh, given that I don't have to pay a fixed rate each month for my APIs. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.